I'll, I'll get started then. So I'm here to talk about the, uh, the AstroPi effort um, and just a little bit about how this got going. Uh, you know, we've been, Python's been used in astronomy now for over uh, 10 years and uh, I'd say it's been seeing continual growth and use both by institutions and, uh, you know, individual astronomers. Um, but I'd have to say until recently the, the community effort was essentially non-existent. What you saw were essentially isolated uh, developments. Uh, there had been, a, a, for many years now, a, a mailing list which would have uh, occasional bursts of traffic, but it did have a continually growing, uh, uh, you know, interest over time. But what I think really kicked this off was this uh, email last year from uh, Marshall Parent when somebody announced a, sort of a, another package, I'm not going to read this all to you, but uh, announced another, you know, software package that duplicated many existing facilities and so he basically started lamenting the fact that uh, we had yet another, you know, uh, package that had uh, similar capabilities to other ones and wondered if something couldn't be done about this. And so out of that, there was quite a bit of discussion. Um, that, but I, I, I think what it, what it illustrated was a, a critical mass had sort of been achieved, that there were enough overlapping efforts ongoing that people were becoming, becoming, uh, becoming uh, seriously frustrated about the fact that uh, there was no, little coordination between these different software packages. And so this led to uh, uh, sort of a, yet again another attempt to see if we couldn't come up with some community effort and so this is what has led to what we call AstroPi now. And last October, we had a uh, uh, coordination meeting among the interested in, you know, and, uh, at CFA uh, to talk about what the goals of this should be. So I'm just going to sort of uh, outline what, what the high level goals of the AstroPi effort were. I mean, above all, there was a great desire to have consistency of of various things between the software packages and to make the life of the astronomer uh, somewhat easier in, in dealing with the various uh, tools that are out there. So then this, this includes things like data structures. So you, could, so you could pass something from one package to another and ex not expect a lot of trouble in getting it to work. Uh, but it extends as well to coding styles, so people use the same kind of coding conventions and approaches to arguments and things like that. And it's the documentation as well. People would like to see the same kind of documentation structure from one, uh, one package to another. Likewise for how you would configure these things and uh, how, you know, how things would be logged and the style of messages that you would see. And particularly about tests that and that even that there would be tests at all. Uh, and then, you know, how the, co the code would be organized, you know, what should be a consistent directory structure to how, you know, they said that people know where to go look for various things in a software package. And then next uh, would be that it would be easy to install. And, uh, and there would be as minimal number of dependencies for the import of the core libraries. And so um, that led to the decision that only the you know, th core three libraries uh, would really be required uh, for AstroPy core things. That'd be NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. And even of those, the only essential one was NumPy. And what I mean by that is uh, that you would at least be able to import all the core libraries. You may not get all their functionality, but uh, you know, if you didn't have SciPy or Matplotlib, you would still be able to use much of what was there. And finally, we settled on a, a BSD-style license uh, for the code that would be in AstroPy. So AstroPy consists of sort of two different regimes of the code. One is core packages, and what's what the core packages include are the sort of standard things that lots of astronomical software, you know layered on top it would use. You could sort of think these as mostly library-oriented library things. 
And uh, initially, so the list I'm showing here is not like all inclusive of what we ever expect to do, but uh, this is the short term uh, goals for what would be in the core package. And that would include things like I.O. Uh, packages, things to read and write FITS files, deal with VO tables, ASCII tables, uh, dealing with world coordinate systems, uh, you know, something to provide logging capabilities. Um, cosmology, physical constants, physical units, and some sort of standard data structure for images and spectra that, uh, you know, the various things layered on top of it uh, could expect to use and, and pass around without uh, significant modification. The other, the other area was things that uh, would be considered affiliated packages, and these would be packages that uh, aren't necessarily distributed with the core, but are expected to use and, and uh, be consistent with the approaches used in the, the core package. That is, you know, if it was using uh, standard astronomical capabilities that it would be using uh, what was in the core and not something else. They wouldn't be using a different FITS library. They wouldn't be using, uh, you know, different units library. Uh, this is not to say that it can't have other dependencies. So, it, it, uh, affiliated packages can have other uh, dependencies and that's not, not prohibited. The idea was to make a template package available to people that were building these affiliated packages that would sort of set the stage for them to be able to uh, share the capabilities uh, uh, without doing a lot of extra work. Uh, so in these templates, you know, essentially, you know, things have been laid out to show you how you would uh, provide the test, how you would, uh, you know, fill out the documentation you know, uh, have already the machinery for packaging and distribution sort of ready to go and um, all you need to do is supply this necessary information for your own package. And uh, I'd say up to now, so over the past year, uh, it, it may not be terribly visible, but a, a considerable amount of work has gone into this particular area is just to set up all this machinery to, to do documentation, to uh, automatically generate documentation to, um, you know, build packages, to run the test uh, and, and have templates that would be, uh, you know, work on all the necessary platforms and stuff. So I, I, I just wanted to highlight that, you know, this is not something people necessarily see as a visible result, but it was sort of laying the necessary groundwork for a, a lot of what you're seeing coming out of this. So, yeah, and the whole idea about the, the template is, to, is sort of uh, foster this consistency I was mentioning in the, in the previous slide. So not only do we want consistency in the core library, we'd like to see the affiliated packages sort of adopt a lot of the, the same style, the same approach, and all that, and make it as easy as possible for them to do that. Um, and so the idea would be it'd be big benefit for users for a relatively small incremental uh, level of effort by the people developing the uh, affiliated packages. They don't have to be in the same repository. Uh, it wasn't required that they need to, to install the software, you know, to use the repository the core package uh, was using. Uh, there are already a, a number out there that are, are being worked on using this template, and I've listed uh, some of these here. And we, uh, we'd hope to to add to this considerably over the next year or two. Um, so the progress, I, I would just say briefly, is uh, besides the things I've mentioned as far as setting up a template, and, uh, is you know there was a, a sort of a contest to see what logo and web layout would be used. And, is it, and not surprisingly, the two different people, you know, one person uh, we thought had the better logo and somebody else had a better uh, web layout. We uh, made an initial release. We sort of viewed this initial release as uh, for developers, not so much for users. The next release is the one that would be targeted for users. That is, people not writing affiliated packages, but would want to use the, uh, the tools themselves. Um, so just to give you a, a quick look at the uh, uh, AstroPy webpage, uh, uh, and, you know, and the style that uh, has been adopted. And from this, uh, I'll, I'll give you the links later, but from this one you can get to uh, pretty much anything else you need to in the core and affiliated uh, uh, packages. Um, 
So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of the, what machinery lies behind all this. Three minutes, Three minutes left? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I won't spend so much time on this. Um, <laughs> So it's using GitHub, uh, and we just basically copy the IPython workflow for uh, dealing with the source code. Um, the documentation is Sphinx-based, and uh, we're using read the docs to, to do automatic uh, building and, uh, of the of documentation. The idea is that we're going to have all the versions of the documentation for every release available, and then there'll be a developer version that shows exactly what's in the repository. Uh, as far as the documentation structure goes. And for, um, there's a developer mailing list uh, that's been added. Uh, and finally, there's, uh, the, we're using pi.test for testing and uh, Shining Panda and as a sort of an automatic build and test uh, facility for seeing how things, sort of continuous integration efforts on the, on the package. Um, I, I'll have to probably breeze right through this. This is a little more detail, and, and maybe we can put this up on the, on the web. Um, you know, things that are there in the, in the core package to help people um, adopt these in affiliated packages. Um, it just sort of summarizes what, what kinds of things are there to, to aid in all that kind of uh, uh, infrastructure for people who want to layer things on top of that. Um, so anyway, so I'll uh, try to wrap up here. The near-term plans are, uh, as I said, to come up with a user-oriented release uh, and start building the affiliated package community. That is, now that we have something to, uh, you know, a uh, fair basis of tools to base it on, to get people that already have code out there to, lay, you know, convert their code to be consistent with this so that uh, we achieve the, the, the goals that we had for doing all this. And by marketing push, just begin, once we have something substantial there to get people, get the word out there and, and encourage people to start using it and start building on it. Uh, there's going to be a second coordination meeting at the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute in October. Um, there are going to be things added to the core, including unit support, NDA, uh, data objects, uh, coordinate data, uh, time systems. Uh, one of the issues we have to deal with, uh, for example, we have PyFITS, and PyFITS is moving into AstroPy, but we have to handle the transition gradually. We can't sort of rip the, you know, the, the, the rug out from people that are using it that way. And we want to make sure that you know, uh, it's being distributed and in in uh, well, well adopted in AstroPy before we discontinue the other uh, distribution mechanism. Uh, just to, this is a slide I showed last year, but I just uh, put a few words in there. So since the last the meeting here last year, uh, if you add together the uh, the user list and the dev list, over a thousand, eleven hundred messages have been uh, posted. So definitely much more traffic, much more discussion going on regarding that. Uh, here are some links. Uh, AstroPy.org is the important one. As you can see, affiliated.astrofy.org will show you the affiliated packages and the GitHub, but you can get to the GitHub um, uh, site from the astrofy.org. And finally, just to, to list all the people that have been involved in this up to now. This is not an effort of a, a small number of people. So um, at that point, I'll stop. Have I used up all the... Yeah, you've just used up all your time. Nope, no, wrong way. Wrong way. Let's see. Uh, this that. Oh, the links. Yeah. Uh, we haven't. They have. If they have an objection, they haven't contacted us. So I don't know. Maybe they're not reading the. Uh, the big yet. Yeah, we haven't gotten big enough yet. I, I'm not sure if you mean the VO or something else. But the VO is the one I would guess you were. <laughs> I could talk to you about that. 
But I guess I better stop at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah.